Saints Rams recap review what have you we're gonna take a look at the box score I'm not mad I'm just disappointed you know I feel like I just had to put down an old dog or something the Saints showed who they are the Saints this performance wasn't the worst performance certainly wasn't the best performance it was somewhere in the middle the moral of the story here ladies and gentlemen is we were just outclassed we were outclassed roster wise we were outclassed coaching we were outclassed in every facet of the game uh they were much better and i think tonight we realized the ceiling of this saints team the, the ceiling of this team this iteration word of the day of the saints is average maybe even a little below average tbh good news is the rest of the division is average to below average so as far as this season yeah Division title, still in place. Still possible. Home playoff game, still possible. Sure. I said it all week. I said it last week. That has no bearing on Allen and Carmichael. Like, people who want the Saints to lose because of Allen and Carmichael, doesn't matter. Because Allen and Carmichael are gone because of games like this, where it's obvious. You know, the Saints, it's just... It's it's a rudderless team. It's It's a relatively boring team. It's a relatively non-creative team and we'll get into this specific game and what we saw and some of the game script situations and some of the play calling and all that stuff but just overall you can kind of tell that we're we're not playing at the clip we're not playing at the level as the above average team the rams are they an amazing team no they, they are an above average team and they looked if you watch the game they looked far and away the better side right and I think that's kind of the narrative here is that an above average team, as long as they play well, they're just going to be better than us. They're just going to have advantages over us because of our coaches and because of the current the current kind of frame of the team, right? And you, I mean, that's okay. You know, that's all right that that's where we're at because we're at the end of this of this chapter. We're at the end of this era. We knew that. No one is surprised. No one should be surprised that Pete Carmichael is not as good of an offensive coordinator or an offensive play caller as Sean McVay. No one should be surprised that Dennis Allen, his defense, got chewed up by Sean McVay. No one should be surprised that Matt Stafford outdueled Derek Carr. Right? No one should be surprised that Cooper Cup and, and Puka Nakua gave our defensive backs problems. You know, It's just a, this was a good, hard reality check real in your face on national tv reality check well, let's actually talk about the game here and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about the season uh the box score is pretty cut and dry uh, we were dominated you know we absolutely deserve to lose this game if, if you look at it i mean y'all know how we do this total yards they almost <laughs> I mean, 460 yards of total offense uh could have had over 500 if they wanted to Good thing we have Dennis Allen as the head coach. Uh, let's see. The YPP, 6.8, pretty strong. And, you know, 6.8 is kind of kind of actually low because they just killed the game off. I mean, it was whatever it was, 30-7. to 7, uh, And they, they were killing the game off just running the ball. So this 6.8, probably closer to 7.5, somewhere in there, which, you know, goes right along with uh, 458 yards of offense. If you look at first downs, you know, 23 to 18. If you look at running, uh, 4.2 to 2.2, yuck. Uh, red zone, uh, three out of six. And then, of course, the turnover. Oh, and the time of possession. They dominated that as well. So, yeah, much deserved win by the Rams. Uh, they played really well. Their players did what they had to do. On our side of the, of, of the game, you know, YPP, kind of whatever yards. We got, we got some garbage time stats at the end there. So, a little bit, a little skewed. Uh, running was a complete train wreck. I mean, 2.2 yards of rush is just so bad. So, so, so bad. Look at the box score here. Stafford was unreal. Uh, Stafford was one of the best versions of Matthew Stafford I've seen in a long time. He was really, really, really dialed in early. Uh, I was very impressed with him. Kyron Williams, so good. Man, 4.7 yards of carry. 22 carries, absolute bell cow, 104 yards. We said it all week long that this was going to happen. Uh, this was this was expected, and he he was he was really 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 good. 
Uh, Puka Nakua was probably the best player on the field. Unstoppable. Man, I tell you what, I was having a conversation tonight. You know, if CJ Stroud doesn't play again because of the concussion, Puka Nakua could be your offensive rookie of the year. What a player. I mean, I mean, for a lot of people, this is their first game really watching him. He's not Cooper Cup. I'll tell you that. He's much more physical, much much more of a big guy, much more of a big receiver, hard to take down, uh, really, really good. Cooper Cup, kind of quiet, actually. 12 targets, only six catches, a couple drops. Uh, kind of an uncharacteristic game from him. And then on our side, again, Carr was okay. You know, Carr, he was fine. and I, I would say average. You know, a lot of people are going to say he racked up yards when we were down 30-7, to seven, whatever, but he was all right. You know, no, whatever. Uh, Kamara, not, I mean, no one on the ground. Kamara, nine carries for 19 yards. Williams, two for eight. Uh, Taysom, two for two. Taysom, completely non-existent. Uh, nothing in the passing game. There's nothing. I, I guess he's still hurt. Uh, Alave was good. Alave was good. Got open early. Had a couple bad drops. Uh, Rashid Shahid, again, long touchdown pass. A.T. Perry, long touchdown pass. Uh, Jawan Johnson got involved late. Kamara, five catches. He got involved late. So, man, I mean, I, I really hate, and, you know, I was I was very active on Twitter, very active during the games. I just hate how the Saints do this, where they don't do anything all game long, right? They don't they don't throw the ball to, to Kamara. They're very, like, very linear. They're very boring. They're very just n- not creative at all. They're just kind of, slowly trying to run offense and slowly trying to do things and then they get down big and all of a sudden they they do what we've been saying to do all game alvin Kamara, four catches on one drive what drive was it drive we score let's go ahead and look at the play by play here so it is 30 to 7 right is that yeah 30 to 7 and look at this Kamara has one catch at this point 30 to 7 in the fourth quarter Camara, boom, two yards. Camara, boom, nine yards. Let's see here. Camara, boom. Uh, Camara, boom. Touchdown. Like, wh- why? Why wait? I just don't understand that. Why wait? Carr is not. Carr is getting no help in pass protection. Carr is getting banged up on on third downs and all that stuff. And 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 you're not looking at Camara at all. You're not trying to get the mismatches. You're not utilizing them. And all of a sudden, let's just get him five catches. You know, let's just, boom. Let's just get him four catches out of nowhere. Uh, now that the game's out of hand, it, it it just drives me crazy that it takes it takes this. It takes thirty to seven for the Saints to get anything going, and then they show you like, hey, if we just kind of you know, if we're efficient, if we're moving the ball around, if we're doing all that stuff, then then we can move the ball. And then of course the the blocked punt and you know the touchdown at the end is what it is. The game is really never in question. Uh, you know, onside kicks nowadays are really 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 hard to get so i mean it's just it's just more of the same i mean honestly is i mean we are consistently inconsistent we are this is pretty much who we are this is the kind of play calling we have this is the kind of scheme we have uh, everything we said in the preview absolutely came to fruition i, w- I wish i was wrong honestly i mean i said that this morning you know i, w- I wish i was wrong i hope i'm wrong i said 28 24 pretty damn close uh well, it's, you know two points off both sides so Sometimes I hate being uh, so damn good at this. But, it, it, yeah, I mean, you know, a couple hours ago, we were holding on to the hope that maybe we could catch we could catch lightning in a bottle. You know, we could, we could have a magical moment on prime time. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't to be had. What did we say this morning? We said, can't start slow. Can't start slow against good teams because good teams, you can only hold them down for so long. You can only hold them down for so long because – they have good players. They have an identity. They have a system. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, you look at this right here. Punt, punt, turnover on downs, punt, touchdown, turnover on downs, end of the half, interception, turnover on downs. You do that against a good team, and what what's the score? 30 to nothing. Yeah. Against the Panthers, this might be a 10-7 game right there. This might be a 7-0 game right there. Against a good team, 30 to nothing. Yeah, you go, let's see, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you if you have eight possessions and you score on one of them, you're gonna you're gonna be down thirty to nothing. Like that that's just that's just the NFL. That's what happens when you have 
you know, on the other side of the field, you have an efficient quarterback, you have an efficient coach, you have, you have an actual functioning offense. If all that is true, you can't do this. Like this is just not it. Just not, it's just not it. And, and that's what we've done all year long. You know, all year long, we have done this exact thing right here where the first eight ish possessions just nothing i mean let's take a look let's let's just like let's just have some fun here ladies and gentlemen let's take a look at let's just go down uh, as far as we can here all right giants game let's see so the giants game let's see we go punt so punt touchdown punt punt touchdown field goal okay so giants game is a little different because we, we were scoring there let's go to the one before that because i feel like the script is always the same where i feel like we're always it's like a seven seven to six seven to three ten three it's always something like that in the first half and then and then we kind of put some points together towards the end there here we go miss field goal punt touchdown punt interception punt 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 and it's 14-6. Yeah, exactly. Like we, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exact same situation. Okay, exact same situation. We have eight possessions. We score on one of the eight, first eight possessions. Same thing as the Rams game. Against the Panthers, in that same situation, it's 14-3. to three, Or 14-6, excuse me. Against the Rams, it's 30 to nothing. See the difference? Right there. That's the difference. That's the difference in playing against good teams. And the Saints just can't start, you know, that we have yet to score a touchdown on that first possession. I saw a stat on Twitter, I believe I retweeted it, that the Rams have scored on 11 of their 15 first drives. That's Sean McVay. That's Sean McVay. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate that we have to sit here and say the same things over and over. You know, we have to say, let's get Kamara involved in the passing game. You know, let's let's play with more tempo, quick passes, intermediate routes. You know, we say the same thing. And it's just, for some reason, these guys can't do it. I mean, some of the game script things we'll hit on real quick. This punt right here on the first possession, I thought was very questionable. You're indoors. It's a 54-yard field goal. I didn't like that. I thought that was very timid. I thought that was very scared, uh, very scared coach there from Dennis. Why even dress out a kicker if you're not going to attempt a 54-yard field goal indoors in a 0-0 game in the first possession? That's kind of crazy. I mean, it really didn't get talked about that much, but it's it, it's it's kind of nuts. Like you don't you don't see that too much. And sorry for the backlighting here ladies and gentlemen it's uh you know late late at night at the studio the uh lights get a little get a little wonky without the the natural light so we're trying to get this video out quick to y'all so please you know is what it is but i i, I don't know you, you don't dress out groupie there and or you do dress out groupie there but you don't bring him out to take to take the field goal i mean a 54 yarder in the nfl is not that big of a deal especially in a non-pressure pack situation is he it is literally the least pressure packed it's the first drive of the game you know and then i didn't have a problem going for it on, on fourth and five because right here you, know, you you can't punt you cannot start this game you can't go punt from their from their 37 or whatever it was to give up a touchdown and then on the very next drive you're gonna punt again from their 48 like punting punting in their territory on back-to-back -back drives to open the game that is brutal so i had no i, I didn't have a, any concern with, with uh with going for forward on fourth down there i didn't like kneeling this ball out right here you've got so they score because of a disastrous drive here it's fourth and five at the uh you know la 42 whatever you, you, you go for it you had two timeouts like you kind of rush this possession okay they score not good you get the ball back with 20 seconds two timeouts you take a shot to shaheed uh shaheed was i thought had a step car just missed him car was getting pressured and then you kneel it out why you know they're getting the ball 
I always say this, and this is something to think about when you when you're kind of watching games. In this situation, okay, second and ten, fifteen seconds left. You have two timeouts. The Rams get the ball to start the second half. What do you think Sean McVay wants Dennis Allen to do right here? What do you what do you think he wants him to do in this situation? He wants him to take the knee, right? Because Sean McVay's thinking if he takes a knee, perfect. We can't be hurt. We're getting the ball to start the second half. I want them to take a knee. And what does Dennis Allen do? He takes a knee. You do not want in a coaching situation. This is a this is a poker strategy as well. You do not want to make decisions that your opponent is happy is happy that you're making. You want to keep the pressure on. If you're Dennis Allen here, you want to take the shots to Shahid. You got two timeouts. Push the ball a little bit. Try and get a field goal. Try and get something. They just scored. It's 17-7. They get the ball. You have not been stopping them at all. They can go up 24-7 and probably kill the game here. They can go up 20-7, to put you in a horrible position. Every point is critical here. To take a knee, tough. Tough coaching uh, first half here for Dennis if you count the punt here and then the kneel down here. Very timid, very scared first half. Uh, I, th- I think, uh, you know, I really do believe this is Dennis's swan song as a head coach. Uh, I think Carmichael, they didn't even show him on the camera. I don't even know if he was in the building, but I think he's gone as well. Just lifeless. Just lifeless performance from the Saints. You know, it's just not the team. It's not the team that we deserve. It's not the team the fans deserve. It's not the team the city wants. But that's all changing. That's all. You know that that all will take care of itself this off season. We're we're now we're in two. These are the two mindsets we're at now. One, playoffs, moving to the postseason. Tampa, all eyes are on Tampa against Jacksonville, and then we've got to beat Tampa. We got to beat Atlanta. That's it. Doesn't matter. Like if you say I don't want to go to the playoffs, I don't want to do this because Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael might come back. They're not coming back. Okay. They're not coming back. It's not happening. Don't worry about it. Like, there's nothing I guarantee. I mean, there's no way after this these kind of performances, there's no way uh, th- those two clowns come back. So don't worry about that. So we've got that. We're highly focused on the NFC South. And then we have the offseason. New head coach, new offensive coordinator. What are we going to do in the draft? That's where our focus is. That's it. You know, that's where our, we now know our ceiling. Our ceiling, like I said, below average to average. Luckily, that can still win us the division. Playoff aspirations as far as like a run, all that stuff. Come on, guys. What are we talking about? You think we're going to beat Dallas? You think we're going to beat Philadelphia? What, what, whatever team we're hosting, if we do get into the playoffs, get real. You know, that, not going to happen. So after that, boom, we move quickly into... Who, who is the next vision? Who is the next person to come in here? Is it going to be Ben Johnson? Is it going to be Joe Brady? Is it going to be Eric Bieniemy? Is it going to be Brian Flores and whatever offensive coordinator he hires? Like, is, is, it, there's a, is it going to be Jim Harbaugh? Like, a lot happening. Okay, exciting times. Exciting times. So, kind of, sort of. Some Saints fans got their wish tonight where the Saints went out there, showed everyone who they are, Showed everyone the, their level, and I think we all agree that that level isn't isn't good, isn't good enough. It's not good enough for Mickey to bring them back. So, you know, nothing again. Again, the players, kudos to the players for coming back and, and fighting. You know, it's thirty to seven on national TV. You're getting embarrassed. I'm sure a lot of players and a lot of teams would have quit. Saints didn't quit. So, we, we've always we've said that every every game. You know, the players. Nothing wrong with the players. Nothing wrong with, with the roster and all that. It's just the culture. It's just the coaches. It's just, I mean, they, they got, the Dennis Allen and Pete Carmichael, they, they got bullied in every single way coaching. Like, this could not have been more of a coast, coaching mismatch. Could not have been more of a just master class from the Rams, master class from McVay, and then just, two guys who are totally lost but we will be covering this game more wanted to get this out as soon as possible tough one we, we the not over nine and a half regular season wins bet is dead uh 
horrific, horrific uh, financial financial implications implications. I almost just had a stroke after watching that game for uh, three and a half hours. You know, the, the the brain has turned to mush. So horrible times for me. Horrible times for my wallet. I will not be sleeping well tonight. I'll be cold sweating uh, thinking about that. Sometimes, sometimes in life, ladies and gentlemen, you get got. And uh, this season with the Saints, I got got. Sad times indeed. But like I said, we'll be covering this game more in depth tomorrow uh, and days to come. Check the channel. We should not have any interruptions over the holidays. So if you want to spend your Christmas and Christmas Eve watching this channel with the great one, with the voice, with the fastest rising channel in New Orleans sports media, or maybe even just in sports media in general, we will be pumping out content. Uh, no interruptions to the schedule in the foreseeable future. Thank you very much for watching. We're moving on to the NFC South divisional race. Ah, sad times. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.